Good afternoon, everyone. Let's look at the bread baskets, plural of the world, not Russia or Ukraine, Argentina, Brazil. Argentina slashing 33% of its expected output. Brazil downgrading 15% loss of crops. Soybeans still upward trend because of that. Food protests, Iraq, Lebanon, Sri Lanka, United Nations FAO, food insecurity map. This is going to expand. Looking back in history, we're looking for a 4x increase in prices globally on the food. And let them eat cake. Uh, this time around, it's going to be food vouchers first. EU in such a deficit for diesel fuel that the United States, which is in a shortage, is now sending emergency shipments. And if you can't make markets and give quotes for the stock market and the futures markets, because 25% of the IT tangled in that was passing through software in Russia, enter the cyber attack. You're going to have to intentionally destroy the markets. They're not going to be functional. Hence the decline of the great empires. The new normal? Uncertainty is the new normal. War, pandemics, partisan politics, and Jerome Powell. There's a consistent sense of tension, fear, and anxiety since this pandemic. The stock market's gotten crushed. Our national debt soared and inflation pummeling most Americans. Since March 2020, gold's up 30% and silver doubling. Now we have Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo all forecasting gold well above $2,000 an ounce in 2022, and even potential price targets of $3,000. Call the Patriot Gold Group today before it's too late. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA, where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver, and you may be eligible for the No Fee for Life IRA on qualifying rollovers. Call 1-800-356-4470 for a free investor guide today. And with the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top rated gold IRA dealer from 2016 to present, click on the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. And we're going to start with some soft reading here. There will be no inflation. Inflation's transitory. Inflation's good for you. Inflation only hurts the rich. Inflation is the consumer's fault. Inflation is greedy business fault. Inflation is Putin's fault. Maybe try lentils and insects. Bread lines are a great way to meet your neighbors. And if you notice how they're trying to normalize food shortages and record high pricing as something normal that you should be used to and it's good for you, there's no way to mask it any longer. It's here. We're going to have to deal with it. And by all recollections, May and June will be the global awareness that will rock the planet. The very fabric of our society will be ripped apart when people realize food prices at 4x, fuels not available, electrical outages, and the quality of your life going back to something similar to serfdom. A few months from now, I'm going to explain how this is happening. And are you ready for it? You're going to have to plant some of your own food. So keep that on the front of your radar, planting food, planting food, go get seeds, plant more food, work with your neighbors, learn how to plant food would be my main message after presenting all the information here. So we'll take a look at the breadbaskets of the world. So Russia and Ukraine front and center, of course, that's 30% of all exported grains are going to disappear off the world market. And now Ukraine going into a corn shortage because the planting seeds not there. Now that's GMO seed, of course. Heirloom varieties, farmers will still plant locally, but that'll be consumed locally, not to the world market. Leaves us with Brazil and the EU, Argentina, and others. Let's start with Argentina. Harvest coming now. Violent, unusual weather impact. Well, that grand solar minimum, jet stream, and cloud cell changes, that was inbound and expected anyway to disrupt agriculture. So now they're looking at around a 33% initially expected output loss, but I love that last paragraph that they buried way at the bottom. New revisions are not yet ruled out, meaning it's going to go lower. Now, jumping over to Brazil, another breadbasket that could bail out. Well, not really the rest of anything. They're so reliant on fertilizer from Russia that they themselves are back against the wall without the farm inputs to produce food, which everybody's relying on. 
So I want to pull back to this article here from last month, ships sitting empty waiting for the Brazil soybeans. Sometimes it's taking 40 days to get the cargo on board versus 7 to 15. The reason that same extreme weather leading to floods and rains at the time they should be harvesting, normally dry, taking the extra step to dry the beans before they're hauled out to export. And they're looking at 7.2 million tons versus 9 which is around a 17% decline. You knew that was going to increase. They were saying 5% about two weeks ago with also possible revisions. And we go from 5% to 17%. What else is being hidden in the numbers? Paraguay knocked 60% off of their soybean crop as well because of the same extremes in weather. So it seems to be a continental wide happening for crop productions and exports not going to be there. So where's the world going to get the food? It's not. See, this is the problem. And they're not in the mainstream media covering this on most major networks. They're not at all. This should be the number one story on the planet. If Ukraine is going to go off, well, they need to dovetail right into the shortages that are inbound for everything, including the food. So when you get into the bread line and you have a digital rationing card, you might want to ask a few questions to your local news first, like why they didn't cover it either. Local news should be on this. International and national news, yeah. What about local news bureaus in farming communities that are still not covering any of these problems that are here just months, plural, a few months away, 60 days or less, and is still not being talked about. So when you look at the soybean prices continuing upward, that's because all the South American producers, well, we see where they lie right now. I like this category here, 80 million tons from the others, and that's not widely talked about. We're looking at about a 20% reduction off of all of this, just from the fertilizer and the herbicide shortages, not even Russia and Ukraine, just the herbicide and fertilizer shortages. So jumping over to the others, India produces 110 million tons of wheat each year. Now they're at the historical highs of exporting 6.5 million tons, and that's the most that was ever exported. And they've eclipsed the 2012-13 record, but that is not even 10% of the others category, and they're already into record production territory and exports. And at that volume of production, nothing else on the planet's even close to coming into that others category. So here we got the wheat pumped into a truck. Ukraine, third largest wheat exporter. So then we need to dissect it. We'll get a little more granular here. Ukraine wheat exports going out, imports in these other countries. Egypt importing from Ukraine, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Turkey, Morocco, Tunisia, Yemen, Lebanon, and Philippines. And then we go over to Al Jazeera. And some of these food shortages have been ongoing since late last year, and this is not helping in any way, shape, or form. It's just going to exponentially increase the food insecurity. Now, Iraq and also Turkey, front line right now, food shortages, sunflower oil, rationing. Lebanon has been under duress for such a long time, but now the fuel and food even increasing far above the paralyzing levels. Sri Lanka, they tried to move over to 100% organic last year and 50% was cut off their yields. In Istanbul, now they're lining up for subsidized bread. You know, we're starting to see a lot of repeats in history here. Nations that are not really food secure and grow enough for their populations are the first pinched. So then I said, all right, let's look over here at the Food and Agriculture Organization, UN. They have a new indicator map here. The larger the bubble, obviously, the more food insecure it is. So let's zoom in on that. And you start to see these same nations right here, Iraq, Lebanon, Yemen, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and the list does go on. From here, I would imagine these bubbles will increase and we'll start to see new spots emerge across this map. And here's an indicator for you that just verifies everything has gone terribly awry. The supplies will not be there. We're looking at global famine by the end of the year. Fertilizers short, herbicides short, exports not there. Ukraine's not going to plant. Confirmation coming now that 
their seed stock, corn, GMO, that's Sargenta, and Monsanto that is running with the Roundup Ready. A, the glyphosate in the Roundup's not inbound, nor is the, the seed. Now again, I'll say it, the farmers who are planting heirloom varieties that are saving their seed to replant for the next year, that will be grown, but that's on a localized basis that will be consumed locally. We're talking about national exports, all of that's GM crop, and that's not inbound. There's blockades everywhere. And if you can show me a link with export figures of where that's come in on rail, all I have is C statistics with a zero, zero, zero at the bottom of every category of imported inputs for corn crop this year. Let them eat cake. I remember a prior French leader claiming, well, this time they're going to give them food vouchers first. So macaroni here has promised to introduce food vouchers to help lower income families survive the hyperinflation so they don't go to the street riot and then we get a repeat of the let them eat cake era in France. Surging fuel and raw materials cost. You mean hyperinflation? Yes. Let's call it what it is. Global food crisis. And governments are going to probably respond the same across most nations. So you have to look at the idea of food vouchers, otherwise known as rationing cards and state subsidies for food. Will governments try to fix price? If they do, that always ends up in a disaster. Black market starts immediately. Digital rationing cards are inbound. Do you have your facial recognition app on the phone to prove who you are to be able to get your one pound of sugar or one pound of butter per week for your family? If you don't, somebody in your family is probably going to have to register for that if you opt not to. We're coming into rationing, no doubt about it. Wheat will be first. We already see sunflower oil over in Turkey. Wheat is being rationed in Egypt and so many other places it's already on the table. And now France, a major power in the EU coming out, says we are going to subsidize because we have to. They're going to riot on the streets if there's no subsidy. So now we see the first major quote unquote superpower going to subsidizing food for the masses. Not going to be long before you see the second nation. It's already far past too late to pull this back. We're going to ride through it. It's like going over a waterfall. You're like, oh, it looks pretty big. And then you see you're going 200 feet straight down. Yeah, that's where we sit. No life rope, no parachute. We're on our own out here. Governments are going to try to mitigate this so they're not overthrown. So what will emerge on the streets and the cities around you is what you need to ask. And how do you protect yourself from that? That should be the major question. And if we do look back in history, we can see a 4x increase is in the books. I like to look at history because what happened in the past will usually repeat in the future in a different set of circumstance. So if we do look back, the mass price spikes was 6 to 7x increase at the very maximum. But the averages, as you can see, would be a 4x increase. I don't think many people are able to handle that. And everybody keeps talking about Brazil, 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 and South America are going to grow the food and save the day uh, if they can get the fertilizers and the farm inputs. Plain and simple. If they don't get it, the planet starves. And this is what I don't understand, is how to this point have our supply chains not reoriented themselves to be focused on 100% fertilizer and farm input production. I just still don't get it. It's baffling. And another thing that makes no sense to me, New York sends diesel cargo to Europe. Rare trade flow reversal. In English, that means the U.S. is now sending diesel fuel to the EU when normally it would import from the EU. EU relying about a third or 30% for its diesel from Russia. That's cut off. Multi-year lows. Record high prices. And now, for some reason... Vessels of fuel that are in shortages in America are being pulled out of America and sent over to Europe. Something is levels above what's happening that's not being reported. And then look at this. Gulf Coast to Europe are at 103,000 barrels, but 
it was normally 19,000, so we'll give that a 5x increase. And staying on the fuel here, late stage Ireland, great telegram group to follow here. It's Farming updates, strong possibility of the diesel being delivered around the country, and this is in Ireland at the moment, is from the emergency fuel supply, just like the strategic reserves in the United States. And apparently there they have six to eight weeks of a strategic reserve, but it looks like it's being pulled from. And here's another outlier. Traffic's not returned to pre-COVID levels. People are still working from home. And the demand for diesel and agriculture is at the lowest point. Well, it's going to ramp up here in another week or two. As people start getting the fields ready, farmers aren't out as of yet. Probably, you know, mid-April is truly when it gets in high gear. So we're at double lows here, but they're still having shortages. So put that in perspective for a second. They're not tilling out there and planting yet. So the amount of diesel needed for that is at the lowest of the entire year. And the use for looks like transportation fuels is also in a shortage, but there's only a percentage of the transportation fleet still working in its post COVID form, which is greatly reduced from pre COVID. So what happens when everything really ramps up into major planning season and those who start to drive more, there's just not enough fuel in Ireland and we're seeing it everywhere on the planet. So this just backs up what's happening over in the EU and we see the same thing happening down around London, making all these new policies because, well, they're getting lean on the, the fuels as well. And there are also a little bit too much rain. They can't spread slurry, can't pre-season the fields, too wet for plowing, etc. So they're on hold for a moment. Now there's a cap of 500 liters of diesel and deliveries. Now remember in the U.S. we're going to do easy math, four liters to a gallon. So you're looking at about 125 gallons max delivery. And they won't even come and fill up your tank. You just say, hey, I'm out. Then they'll come and get you filled. Now, small villages are reporting they've been out of fuel for a couple of days or two during the week. So that, again, that's rationing. You get five days of fuel, two days off. And yeah, that's similar to the Sunday law. One diesel supplier who was in business 50 years and used to get diesel from Dublin port states that they were out of diesel last week at the port. That never happened before. And even though there are storage tanks at the port facility for holidays and emergencies, etc., those were dry also. And as we look at the landscape of cause effect, this is the granddaddy right here. This is the thing that takes civilization down. The lockup of everything is contingent upon this failing. So the S&P Dow Jones indices, consultation on sanctions, and the Russian market accessibility says that they're going to remove all indices or stock listings and stocks domiciled or based in Russia. And you might say, wow, that's crazy. Why would they do that? That's going to rock the markets. If you're looking for chaos, another great play right there. And also they're going to declassify Russia from an emerging market to a standalone market. So in terms of interest rates and risk assessment that puts it into a whole new category right there but here's the wild card they keep talking about cyber attacks see deutsche bank in germany was employing some 1500 people in russian tech centers now the software they were using was obviously proprietary and they kept developing and maintaining this software for interbank global trading and the business spin-offs from that they were stress testing the impacts that would be felt if they were not able to operate with Russian staff. The results were catastrophic failure across all markets because there would be no quotes into the market. Not on time. And here's the kicker. No negotiations could make it back from the market without passing through that same software, which has already been turned off. And things going wrong almost immediately when they gamed this out, it was a collapse in the world's commodities to stocks, bonds, everything else in between. So then we jump over to the London Metals Exchange where LME halted nickel trading following 250% price hikes, stops out, bankrupted billionaires in China, and they still haven't been able to get it back online again. 
So when you see right here, deferred delivery commitments on all of its main contracts are still not functional and reorganized, which backs up exactly. Those market makers going through with their quotes off the Russian software is not functional. The markets are broken. So the cyber attack will be the perfect cover to cover for this. Take down the markets completely and restart. Look at the chaos. And you know they're using AI to game it. We are at the end of an era and everything is dovetailing to this point here in May and June because they can't mask it any longer after that point. It can't be masked. The fertilizer shortages and the non-planting, the seed non-availability, exporters in the Southern Hemisphere, which have been at their max export and trailing off into uh, the, the downside of the season, the numbers are going to be so incredibly low. And once you start to add all these pieces up here, there's two possible scenarios. The news, global media, runs with it to create panic, to create shortages, because everybody's going to run a panic buy. And that's scenario A. Or they're going to try to make rosy numbers and deflect it. That'll only be good until, say, July or August, because they're going to be field reports at that point. And farmers have internet. They can go around USDA numbers and put out their own reports like they did before with the wipeouts in Oklahoma with the flooding that the USDA downplayed and manipulated markets to keep markets stabilized a couple years back. This is it. And then when we come into October, it's just not there. It's just not there. The food. So I'm wondering at what point they're going to pull the plug and allow the panic to start or suppress the panic for a very certain effect at a certain month to create the most damage and chaos as possible to reset everything. This reset is not going to be a slow trickle in, I do believe, with all these things setting up right now. The fuel shortages, the food shortages, the, the mix-ups in the market, uh, things delayed, contracts not being fulfilled, even out at the... What's that? The Comex, they can't get the silver bars. So people want physical delivery, especially on the precious metals. are having a real, real, real difficult time acquiring anything physical. So you can already see everything in its form is broken at the moment. And especially when there's going to be one to be physical delivery of the grains and just not going to be there. So where does that take us now? Well, if you've been following Ray Dalio putting out his multi-book series, on what's causing the collapse and the rise and falls of civilization through time and price increases in food and metals and hyperinflation running back some 2,000 years. A chart. Thanks, Ray, for the chart. Appreciate that. Rough estimates of relative standing of great empires. We are at empire collapse within months now. The reset will be on purpose. The chaos is on purpose. So you got a couple choices here using your mind. So I like to jump back to Nikola Tesla. My brain is only a receiver. In the universe, there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. And this is the same thing that we're going to have to tap into this river of knowledge, this endless time space of knowledge that we all have access to, but have been programmed out of access. The solutions we're going to need to come together to bring to the table are going to be for some outlandish, unthinkable, impossible, but it will manifest as possible. And I do talk more about this in many Ice Age Conversations podcast on how our world is shifting and possibilities of shifting it back, looking for the signs of chaos and downfall triggers that will be the catalyst for the next set of events. If you can stay ahead of that, you can definitely ride out this chaos. In my newest episode 348 with Lynette Zhang from ITM Trading, we talked exactly about this, the financial reset waves. And that podcast you can find anywhere. Podcasts are hosted across the net. Many Ice Age conversations. I thank you for watching the video. All the links are in the description box below for tonight's images, stories, graphs, interactives with the FAO.
Hope you got something out of the video and I will see you next time.